Pluto, right? That little dwarf planet way out there that used to be one of the real planets. Well, it seems like it's back in the news thanks to some surprising ideas from big names like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku. They're suggesting that Pluto might actually be on a crash course with Neptune. Now, how could something like that even happen? And what would be the result if these two actually collided? Is this simply an odd incident in space we're seeing, or is there something bigger going on here? Let's see what's happening. Even though Pluto got bumped down to dwarf planet status partly because of how weird its orbit is it's still a source of inquiries aimed at astronomers. The newest buzz is that some scientists are saying Pluto's path is becoming significantly too close to Neptune's. And it's not just some random people, Tyson and Kaku are the ones who have made the statement about a possible impact. A crash between these two could possibly even result in issues down the road for Earth. The first thought is, how is that even a possibility? The orbit of Pluto is unlike any other planets. It takes Pluto a crazy 248 years just to go around the Sun once. To put that in perspective, it was only discovered in 1930 and it hasn't even made a full circle yet. And it gets weirder. Pluto's path isn't a neat circle like most of the other planets. It's more of an oval, what scientists call elliptical. On top of that, it's tilted compared to the other planets like it's on a slant. This tilt and oval shape make its orbit super strange. One of the craziest things, Pluto's orbit actually crosses Neptune's for about 20 years during its orbit. Pluto is, in fact, closer to the Sun than Neptune during that time. This brings up a pretty simple question, why haven't they smashed into each other already? The response relates to gravity from other planets affecting them. When Pluto was first discovered, people had a hard time figuring out just what it was doing out there. Unlike the paths of the main planets, it looked skewed and not particularly circular. This became even weirder when they learned that Pluto and Neptune's courses overlapped. The fact that Pluto is still cruising along without hitting Neptune is a testament to how complex things are in space. The motion demonstrates that the gravity of Neptune and the Sun interact to affect where Pluto goes. One reason for the stability of things is something physicists refer to as a libration. What it means is that when Pluto is crossing Neptune's orbit, it's always super far away from Neptune itself at least 90 apart so they never get close enough to bump into each other. Furthermore, Pluto moves vertically. When it's nearest to Neptune, it's either far above or below Neptune's path. There's also something called VZ oscillation, that's how they move relative to the Sun. This helps explain why Pluto's path is truly unique. It makes sure Pluto moves steadily rather than erratically. Computer tests from the 1980s demonstrated that Pluto's orbit could change a lot with only minor differences in how scientists first calculated it. To add to this, Neptune and Pluto fall into a 3-2 to orbital resonance where for every three times Neptune orbits the Sun, Pluto orbits twice. Furthermore, Jupiter and Saturn, the other large planets, also work to maintain Pluto's orbit. As a result of this bizarre coupling, it's even more important for maintaining a sense of order throughout the solar system. Without being able to guarantee that bodies like Pluto will orbit correctly, the entire system could enter a state of chaos. At the end of the day, even seemingly unstable orbits can work out and come to equilibrium through this crazy interplay of gravity. These computer models are really useful for figuring out what's going on. They use math to show how Pluto and other things in space impact each other. Tiny modifications to these models can have a significant effect on where Pluto ends up. Predicting such occurrences with Pluto's chaotic orbit is extremely challenging. These systems are so unpredictable that it's hard to know what will happen long term. Though these simulations are great for understanding, they also highlight how tough it is to actually guess what will transpire. These models depend on knowing the correct details from the beginning. Any small error can lead to big differences down the line. Even with the giant planets trying to keep something like this from happening, why are Tyson and Kaka mentioning this sort of collision? Well, Tyson is famous for making science easy to understand, and he has a few thoughts about Pluto. 
He believes that as more space is discovered, classifying Pluto as a dwarf planet makes sense for our broader understanding of the solar system. He sees how hard it can be to determine where something like Pluto will travel years ahead, but he always places emphasis on learning more. Kaku, on the other hand, is always looking into the future. He believes that models need to be maintained and refined to spot possible issues in advance. He knows any potential interactions are crucial to comprehending how space functions. Both Tyson and Kaku mostly agree that space continues to become more difficult to fully comprehend and that models have to keep improving as technology gets stronger. Ultimately, the scientific consensus is that Neptune's and Pluto's orbits are stable at the moment. But in the end, it's important for scientists and astronomers to monitor and continue working on any long-term risks. So, Pluto that little dwarf planet way out there used to be one of the main planets. But guess what? Some big-shot astrophysists like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku have been talking about Pluto again. They've got this idea that it might actually crash into Neptune. How could that even happen? Also, what if it did? Would it be significant to us? Scientists are looking into whether this is just a weird space thing or something more. Pluto has always been a little odd. It got kicked out of the planet club partly because of its crazy orbit. Now, some folks are saying it's getting a little too close to Neptune. Tyson and Kaku are even warning about a possible crash that could mess things up for Earth. Seriously? So, how could this be possible? Well, Pluto's orbit is super strange. It takes 248 years to go around the Sun once. Since we found it in 1930, it hasn't even finished one trip. In addition, its course is not circular like the other planets, it's more like an oval on a slant. And here's the crazy part. Pluto's orbit actually crosses paths with Neptune's for about 20 years during each orbit. Pluto even gets closer to the Sun than Neptune does. So why haven't they smashed into each other yet? Gravity from other planets is the reason. When Pluto was first spotted, astronomers were scratching their heads about its weird orbit. It's tilted and oval-shaped, unlike the other planets' paths. The fact that it crosses Neptune's orbit just made things even weirder. The stability of Pluto's orbit shows just how complex space can be. Think of it like this, the Sun, Pluto, and Neptune are all pulling on each other. It's hard to figure out where each of them will end up. In Pluto's case, it's like Neptune and the Sun are in a tug-of-war. Scientists use terms like oscillation to explain this. In essence, even though Pluto crosses Neptune's path, it's always far enough away to avoid hitting anything. Another factor is that Pluto moves up and down in its orbit. So, when it's closest to Neptune, it's usually higher up, which keeps them from colliding. Add to that the way the Sun's gravity affects them, and it turns out that even if Pluto's path looks strange, these oscillations help keep it steady over the long run. It shows that even in space, there's order to be found even if it looks like chaos. All these factors keep Pluto from crashing into Neptune or getting lost in space. Back in the 1980s, some computer simulations showed that Pluto's orbit is a bit unpredictable. Tiny changes could cause big differences over time, but it turns out that Pluto's orbit is stable over really long periods, billions of years, actually. Scientists use computers to study how the big planets Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn affect Pluto's path. For every two times Neptune revolves around the Sun, Pluto does it three times. This resonance helps keep Pluto in a steady orbit. However, Neptune isn't the only one helping out. Jupiter's gravity also keeps Pluto safe, and Saturn chips in, too. Jupiter's gravity is strong enough to keep Pluto on track for billions of years. It's like Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn are all working together to protect Pluto. Without these stabilizing forces, our solar system would be a much more chaotic place. Planets could collide or be kicked out of the system. That's why understanding Pluto's orbit is so important, especially since people are talking about it hitting Neptune. It gives us a better understanding of how our solar system works. 
Pluto's story shows how even unstable-seeming orbits can find balance, thanks to gravity and the way things move in space. It also reminds us to keep watching and studying these things so we can learn more about our place in the universe. Space is wild, and Pluto's orbit proves it. Its path can change a lot based on tiny factors. Despite the fact that Pluto is stable due to several influences, its orbit can still look pretty crazy. Start with a small change, and its path can appear completely different after millions of years. Yet, despite all that apparent disorder, Pluto's orbit stays stable for billions of years. Predicting space dynamics especially with crazy orbits like Pluto's is hard. These systems are so unpredictable that it's tough to say what will happen in the long run. Computer models help, but they're not perfect. Small mistakes can lead to big differences, making exact predictions difficult. The wild nature of orbits like Pluto's reminds us that the universe is ever-changing. Even though we've learned a lot about space, Pluto demonstrates that there's still much we don't know. Understanding how the big planet's gravity affects Pluto's orbit tells us a lot about how the solar system works. It shows how each planet can alter the motion of others. So, why are folks like Tyson suddenly concerned about Pluto colliding with Neptune? Tyson has previously stated that the more we learn about space, the more questions we have. Kaku thinks we need to keep watching space closely because things can be pretty unpredictable. They both agree that space is full of surprises and that we need to keep exploring and learning. Even though most scientists think Pluto and Neptune are safe for now, we still need to monitor them to see what happens in the future. Better telescopes and computer models will help scientists make better predictions. Kaku and Tyson remind us that we need to keep exploring and be ready to change our minds as we discover more. The concept of Pluto colliding with Neptune shows us how complex and exciting our solar system is. It reminds us that there's still a lot to learn about space and that we need to keep exploring to find out what's out there.